So a little recap. This time last year, I was on my way home from a European tour. Yeah, remember those things? Remember those live gigs? Loud music, people all compact into a room, breathing each other's air? Uh, yeah, it's quite strange how much has changed with that stuff. They're, it's practically inexistent now. A lot of us don't have that sort of work at the minute, which is... Anyway, anyway, before this tour, I decided I needed to start making my synthesizer more reliable because it started to break down more and more and it was getting a little bit embarrassing just trying to... <laughs> troubleshoot live on a stage it was just a little bit too much and this was mostly down to a lot of my shoddy strip board soldering and stuff like that which is perfectly fine for experimenting and having it in a synth that isn't being lugged around and chucked all over the place and stuff but the second you start taking it on the road and moving it around and stuff it just starts getting more and more unreliable which wasn't really going to fly so I decided I needed to make these more reliable by putting them onto printed circuit boards and the problem with this is, as you can see, there's a Eurorack module right here. Uh, you'll notice that these are a lot bigger than Eurorack. Uh, in fact, they're 20 centimeters tall. Uh, call it metric 5U. But they do actually share a lot in common with Eurorack as they have the same power supply, same power standards and stuff like that. The only difference is they're bigger and they've got big jacks. And funnily enough, on tour, there's actually a comment that comes up quite a lot. And it's people saying, oh, I thought you were gonna be shorter than you are. Because I guess when people see the synthesizer and me stood in front of they sort of assume that this is smaller than it is. It's quite strange how much I get that comment, actually. So over this past year, at the same time as making this more reliable, I figured why not make these available to people so they can build their own Cosmo modular synth. This is not a new thing. I've been doing these sort of projects, but as strip board layouts for the last, like, three years or so and I've been talking about the standard of 20 centimeters for quite a while now which was initially inspired by a conversation with a friend called Simeon Rogers because I used to have 15 centimeter tall modules and he was trying to figure out what size to do it. We came to the conclusion that making it bigger would probably be a better idea. So in October I decided to put up the first module and I said I was going to build a module a month. When I did that video first I didn't think whether it was going to be possible because obviously they are quite time consuming to design and you don't want to really do a rush job on them so but somehow a year on I've actually managed to finish 13 modules that are available to build yourself. It started in October with the 113 performance filter inspired by Rene Schmidt's take on the MS20 low pass filter. Then the next one was an electric druid based LFO and then after that the 1222 VCO that had a built in tuner so you could make sure you're in tune and then the fine tune knob wasn't exactly a an octave which is something that I just swear why why is that not a thing after that was the 1157 adsr and then there was a couple of different vcas a dual vca and a quad vca mixer these are used to mix together all the synth voices before they go into the mixer after that it was an effect called the triple splashback which is a triple lo-fi delay which you can get sounds from chorus all the way over to reverbs and beyond and weird noises and stuff like that then there was a buffered multiple which is boring but you sometimes need these things after that was a six channel midi to cv converter based on the midi muso platform and then the big mama the 10 oscillator mega drone yeah and that brings us up to this month where there's actually two modules Woo! but we will have a chat about these in a second so obviously playing live has been rather different this year round uh it's been a bit strange not playing gigs i've sort of fallen a little bit out of practice but I've done a lot more live streams and uh, live videos and stuff like that. For instance I've just done a Waiting for the World to End live video which you can listen to over on BBC Radio Introducing Cambridgeshire. I think they're going to put up the video at some point as well but here's a little snippet of the video. different strange and challenging year to say the least but I don't need to tell you that because we're, we're all in this in different ways so I thought this video would be quite a good overview to show you what other people have been up to uh, with these modules and other projects uh, around these things in January I set up a forum so people can talk about them and see if there's any problems and we can figure them all out together and it's really started to turn out into a nice little community over there uh, there's a link below if you want to check out the forum I put up a thread a couple of days ago asking for people to send in pictures of their projects be them Cosmo modular or other modules as well that they've been building 
doing uh, whilst on the forum and here's a few of them right now. And at the end of this video, there's gonna be a few like video clips of the sounds that people are getting from these things. But before we do that, let's build the new 1114 filter girl, which is a rather strange stepping, distorting filter that's got voltage control over the resonance and a built-in VCA. And we'll build the offset booster tenuverter, which kind of makes you do weird things with your control voltages. Let's build these. Right, okay, so we're back again. Uh, this is all everything that you're gonna need to make the 1114 distorting filter girl. Uh, you start with the low components we've got the uh, resistors right here and then you start with the low ones it doesn't matter which way around you do them just make sure they go in the right value labels as the right resistors lovely jubbly and then after you've snipped all the legs off that is when you continue apparently I uh, come on hurry up and finish with the resistors what's taking you so long and then after the resistors that is then time to get for the next big bits with the capacitors and the uh, sockets for the ICs and stuff like that and then you put in the big electrolytic capacitors which matter when they go around just make sure they're the right way around and now you put in all the front components you've got to make sure that you don't solder these on quite yet because if you do then you might not be able to put the panel on correctly now you've got to put on the panel screw everything down and then you solder it in to make sure it's all perfectly lined up and you're a happy camper everybody's a happy camper and then you put the jack sockets in make sure it's all correct and then screw those in doing exactly the same don't solder them yet and then after you've bolted them all in it's quite fiddly uh, make sure you solder them. Solder in the jumper first, just to make sure it's nice and solid. And then solder away. These take quite a while and quite a bit of solder to uh, make sure they're nice and solid. So uh, make sure there's time. But double check, you've got this jack the right way around first before you solder. Then put the knobs on. Any knobs you like. Lovely jubbly. And that's what we got. We'll go out and look at this later. So a little bit of the backstory on the 1114 filter girl. This design started out in a number of builders live streams about a month and a half ago. Sounds like a dying cat. Where I was looking at a LM13700 dual transconductance amplifier, which is quite a popular chip in modular synth circuit design. You can use the LM13700 for a number of different things. For instance, filters, VCAs, uh, four quadrant multipliers, uh, ring modulators, this, that, and the other. So I figured it was worthwhile just having a sit down and a mess around. With this particular filter, I started with the data sheet schematic of a low pass filter, and I basically just kept on fiddling around with it until it started sounding a bit funky. I then used a second LM13700 to act as a voltage controlled amplifier, which basically went from the output of the filter and sent it back into itself to act as a resonance control. Resonance, which is the bit that goes it makes the filter sound a bit more like juicy. It's basically feedback. It's like getting a microphone and putting it at a speaker. And usually in a standard low pass filter, this resonance is usually just uh, controlled by a volume knob. So the volume knob, which is the resonance level, is just controlling how much signal is going back in to the filter. The thing is we're putting a VCA in this circuit is it actually only ended up using one side of an LM13700. So I had a whole other side of the LM13700 left 
to do whatever with. So I decided to put another VC8 on here. So in theory, to make a whole synth voice, all you need is an oscillator, an envelope generator, and this thing. But anyway, enough talk, let's see what it sounds like. So here we go, this is the one that we've just built. It's got a filter knob, it's got a clipping knob to uh, sort of clip and distort it, resonance, it's got a VCA, the level going into the VCA from the control voltages. It's got a control voltage over the resonance, and it's got an attenuverter to control the filter. So if you turn on the shelf, it does actually self-resonate. <laughs> What happens when we plug in a square wave into one of the inputs? The notches that it's creating are very emphasised, which is kind of funky. Turn on the shelf. is just the filter resonance acting really strange. You can notice it's a weird filter. So this is without resonance, and then you turn up the then you turn up the resonance and it adds some really weird artifacts. It's literally gone down an octave. Turn up the clipping. I'm not adjusting the octave, the octave is merely being adjusted by the artifacts made by the clipping and resonance put together. I'm descending the LFO to the voltage control of the resonance. The control voltage input to the VCA can actually be inverted via this attenuator, so you can make it go... So that is the 1114 filter gur. You can get the PCB and panel from our site as well as the offset booster tenure that we built earlier as well. And like all of the other projects, the schematics are available over on my website. So if you want to build it on stripboard or something, then you can. Isolated stems from the synth in the jam that I did with the filter is available over on my Patreon. So if you want to just kind of just use it for this, that, and the other, then you can do that as well. Anyway, to play us out a few submission videos from over on the Cosmo forum. So uh, if you want to go and check out the forum, the links are below and yeah, take it away. So if I combine what we have so far...
Sam and fellow Cosmo people, um, my name is Tim, I'm from Melbourne and this is me, I'm just getting started, but as you can see, I've got my first few panels, a nice case, a meanwhile RT65B with a 3 printed little housing and a Covfefe from uh, non-linear circuits here in Australia, and that's me starting out in Cosmo, next up I will be... Um, uh, having a go at making a few uh, boards on Stripboard and making up my own panels and I've got a couple more things to order from Sam as well. That's me.